Hi, once again this is Ed from Exotic Blanks, welcoming you to Sunday Night at the Movies. Uh, this week we're going to use a black palm blank and make a pen out of it. And the reason that I've chosen this is that the black palm that uh, we discovered and are showing on the site is very dry. And it's a great opportunity to see how you can handle wood that would just as leave fall apart as make a pen. So it's going to take a little while here and you're going to see a lot of repetitive stuff and I have no idea what I'm going to say for all of this. But let's start out with the drilling section here. I am currently drilling the blank and um, it goes pretty smoothly but what you can notice is that the uh, drill is bringing out little tiny bits of sawdust. Uh, whenever you get that you know that the wood is very dry. So it's not going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there are lots of things that can go wrong when the wood is exceptionally dry. But we continue and get the, um, get the blank drilled. In my usual spirit of trying to tell you the truth about what happens with this stuff, uh, this is the second attempt. Uh, the first attempt blew up and I recognized what I had done. I was using a roughing gouge because it was a square piece and I was going to show that you could use a roughing gouge. Well, you can, but you can also blow up a blank if you're much better with a skew than you are with a roughing gouge. So the second try here, we are now going back to the way that I'm comfortable, which is taking a skew and taking off the two ends first. And as you can see where I've already cut off the end on the um, what right side as we look at it, uh, that is pretty shiny. That means that I did some tool sharpening before I started this video. Uh, this is a fairly sharp tool and we're going to approach this fairly slowly and I'm going to get a blank, I'm going to get a pen out of it. But the first one, um, I did not. So this is, um, this is the way that you do it after you've learned that you can mess them up if you don't watch what you're doing. So here we're just trying to bring it down a little at a time. And as I've said, I use the cor the corners first. I always take off the corners first. My theory there is that particularly on wood like this, it may chip out. It will probably only chip out as deep as the cut is on the end of the blank. So if you give it some place to chip out to, it usually will not chip into the section that you're actually trying to use for a pen. It will usually chip out and still leave you enough wood that you're going to be able to make a pen. Well, this looks like nothing more than turning. It's actually kind of interesting. Um, this is a pretty sharp tool and I'm doing pretty good turning and yet when we stop and look at the blank you can see that parts are chipping out as I'm coming across them even though the tool is sharp. So I will try going the other direction and I feel that in one direction it was a little bit better than it was in the other direction so I started trying to use just that one um, cutting direction and thought that that might help. And help possibly but as far as did it do the job no I continued to have trouble with uh, chipping out parts of it even though you don't see the chips coming off when I stop the lathe again and you look at it you'll be able to see that there are a number of areas that this is uh, is not nicely turned so this is when we start to realize that uh, it's going to take a little bit of additional um, reinforcement and so for me, that means reach for thin CA. Um, if we get some thin CA and douse that um, that blank with thin CA, it will soak in and it will make the blank less likely to fall apart like that. Now, it also makes it uh, more dense, harder. So, yes, your turning does become a little more difficult, but if you have a sharp tool, you will cut it and hopefully you will cut it without having any tear outs and all the things that we were getting before. So you can see that I do this with the hand wheel. You can do it while it's running if you want to, but it does tend to get all over everything. Uh, so I put the thin CA on and kind of watch it uh, 
soak into the to the blank. Uh, as you can see there, it's pretty wet everywhere. So once that's been done, then I set it off to the side and I go away for 10 or 15 minutes because uh, it takes a while for that to soak in and the smell is not very attractive. Uh, it will actually not hurt you. Those who talk about it being cyanide, uh, sorry, but the MSDS does not say that that's anywhere near true. So that's how we reinforce it, and then we'll move on and do that off and on for several takes. Okay, you're not seeing things. I have adjusted the speed on this because the actual footage took about 15 minutes, and we're going to try to see if we can't narrow that down to about 7 or 8. So you'll see that I'm turning rather quickly. Now, the fact is I didn't turn anywhere near that fast. So this has been uh, speeded up, if you want to call it that. A couple of things that I wanted to cover, though, I did not, when I made this um, blank, I did not soak the inside of the blank, which I could have done, and in retrospect, I probably should have done. Um, if you put the hole, drill the hole in the blank, and you know that you have something like this where it's going to be difficult to turn, it's going to want to fall apart, you can, instead of going right to putting a tube in, put thin CA into the hole and put your fingers over both ends of the hole and shake it several times and then do that again and do it again until you have got the inside of that pretty well coated with thin CA. Now recognize that what we're turning here is the part of the blank that is close to that hole that you drill through. So if you take the time to do some uh, reinforcing that with thin CA from inside the hole, you're going to find that the blank holds up a lot better close to the tube, and that's the part that's going to end up being your pen. So it isn't a bad idea, and I do it sometimes. I didn't think this was going to be that difficult, but it turned out to be a lot more challenging than I expected. So if you do get any of these blanks, I suggest that you drill them and then uh, put the thin CA in there and just shake it up in the do it two or three times at maybe hour, hour and a half intervals and then uh, let it sit for a day or two and then come back and re-drill it because the thin CA will be um, inside that tube and the tube will not slide in and out. So if you probably noticed I've put CA on it a couple of times and I've squirted it with accelerator from time to time Basically, all I'm trying to do is make sure that I give this as much possibility as I can of staying together. Uh, the CA will hold it together, and as you turn it, it, um, it isn't all that hard, although it is dense. Uh, once that CA is on it, it does require a sharp tool. So you probably want to go and sharpen your tools from time to time, particularly after you've squirted it and got the uh, accelerator on it and so forth. Uh, that's a good time for you to let the whole thing dry and go sharpen a tool real quick and then come back and take a couple more passes. That's all there is to it. All you have to do is keep your tool sharp. Go back with the CA frequently, thin CA, thin cyan acrylic glue, uh, and let it sit for a little while in between coats. You can use accelerator if you want to. I don't think it gets into the blank quite as far if you use the accelerator. But that's how you make it out of difficult woods. This particular one was a black palm. Um, many of the times, black palm makes really beautiful pens. So good luck to you, and enjoy your turning. This is Ed from Exotic Planks. Thanks for watching. Bye now.